Good morning and welcome to Master of Puppets, how to temper an EDR. My name is Daniel. I come from Austria, nearly by Innsbruck. I started my personal infosec journey about four years ago. And still one of my most favorite topic is to learn about the functionalities from uh, endpoint security products and defensive mechanisms on Windows and how can we uh, await them from red team perspective. Short disclaimer, this is only about my personal research, my personal experience. I make no claims, claims to completeness at all. I'm not showing, showing any zero days. So for every key activity, you normally need a privileged user, um, excluded special situations. And important when I speak about EDRs in the talk, I always refer to products, uh, which also include an antivirus module. So an EPP EDR combination, the shown strategy or techniques applies to multiple products on Windows. And I want to keep everything vendor neutral. Okay, today we take a closer look at the MITRE subtechnic impair defenses, disable or modify tools. And we try to find a way to disable the main functionalities from an EDR by tempering specific components. But we want to achieve that without relying on an uninstall password or token, uninstalling the product in general, or using the Windows Security Center. The first step. We take a closer look at the EDR Windows user space and kernel space, kernel space component. We want to better understand the functionality. And also we want to better understand the relationship between the components in user space and between the components in user space and in kernel space. And in the second step, we try to use that gain knowledge and try to find a way to temper the EDR and permanently get rid of antivirus capabilities uh, mostly prevention based on user space API hooking and kernel callbacks. We also want to permanently get rid of EDR capabilities like detections and uh, collecting telemetry, also in case of API hooking and callbacks. And we also want to permanently get rid of EDR web console features like the host isolation feature, which can be used by the blue team to isolate your compromised machine. So what is API hooking described in a few words? You can imagine it like a proxy on process level, which means that the EDR uses its own hooking DLL, injects this DLL into the address space of a process, and set the hook in form of a jump instruction on specific APIs, mostly native APIs in anti DLL. And by this hook, the executed code in context of the hooked API gets redirected to the EDR DLL. And by this, the EDR has the possibility to analyze it in real time and to make a decision, okay, is the executed code malicious or not? So imagine you have the following scenario. You were already able to get initial access by a phishing mail or similar, and you were also already able to escalate your privileges to a privileged user by using an exploit or a misconfiguration. And by having a look at the process structure on a compromised machine, you see an additional open useful user session from another user. So we can try to dump ELSAs, or we also can try to steal the token from a respective process from the user and then another user session. In my scenario, I tried, tried a few different techniques and a few different procedures, but the problem was there was a very tough EDR product installed. And I created at the end simply too many alerts and was isolated by the blue team. And that was reason enough to dig deeper into that area to learn more about EDRs on Windows and how can I temper it. For sure, if you already have achieved admin privileges, you can try to simply uninstall the product. But normally, this shouldn't be possible if the blue team has done his homework correctly because you need an uninstalled token or password. And despite you have achieved app and privileges, um, most well-known EDR products can still be very annoying. Okay, so in the first three steps, we take a closer look at the EDR user space component. And in the first step, we uh, start with EDR processes. So normally EDRs initialize their uh, processes in the system session as protected process light which means that even if we have achieved system integrity in user space, we are not allowed to directly terminate a PPL process. But as we know, in the meantime, 
there are several different ways how we can try to deal with PPL processes from red team perspective. And one way could be to use a vulnerable device driver to get access to kernel space. So you can more or less bring your own uh, vulnerable device driver like the MSE afterburner driver. And by this, um, if the driver is loaded, uh, even an unprivileged user in low integrity or medium integrity has now right access to the kernel space. And in context of protected processes from EDRs, we can use that to attach to the e-process structure from the process, temporary patch uh, PPL, and then disable or uh, terminate, they no longer protect the process from the EDR. So there are several different tools which you can find on GitHub, like PPL Killer, which uses RTCore 64 driver, or you can also use Mimikatz, which bring his own vulnerable device driver. Also an interesting observation, depending on the product, it can work when you are able to execute process hacker in a privileged way. Process hacker brings his own device driver and depending on the product, you can directly terminate a protected process in the system session. Interesting, uh, I started my research about one year ago and in the meantime, I was able to observe that uh, vendors started to blacklist and block vulnerable device drivers, so be aware about that. Okay, so the tools which we see before, they all rely on a third party driver. Another interesting possibility is to use the tool Backstep. Uh, instead, instead of relying on a third party driver, Backstep uses the Microsoft Sign driver from Process Explorer. But in the end, it doesn't matter which tool you are use because normally, if you also were able to kill the, uh, the process from an EDR, normally this uh, termination is only temporary, which means that the process, process gets restarted and again and again, no matter how often you will terminate the process. And even between the gap when the, term, uh, the process was terminated and gets restarted, depending on the product, it can be about 30 seconds or at least a minute, even between this gap, I was able to observe that the uh, main features from the antivirus module and from the NDR uh, work uh, normally. So derived from that, in my opinion, um, the only terminating the EDR PPL process um, is not a solution and it's much too less to really get rid of an EDR on Windows. Because of that, we go on. And in the second step, we take a closer look at the EDR services. So we have to identify the service uh, from the EDR, which is connected to the EDR PPL process. And for my understanding, um, the EDR user space service and the process together build more or less the EDR user space component. And by having a look at the recovery tab from the service, we are able to identify that the service is the component which is responsible for restarting a terminated PPL process. So we started in first step. And similar to processes, even if you have achieved system integrity, you're normally not allowed to pause, stop, or disable a PPL service. Um, the reason for this is that uh, normally EDRs use in kernel a component which is called an ELAM driver. And by this, they initialize their uh, own service in user space as a protected service. And at the moment, there is no way to directly pause, stop, or disable it. Okay, so in the third step, we take a look at the EDR registry keys from the user space component. So we have to identify the rec key, sub key, or entries from the EDR user space component. And there are two interesting entries, the launch protected and the start entry. This talk, we will focus on the start entry. So um, by the start entry, we can have influence on the initialization behavior from the EDR user space component, which means if it would be possible to change the value two, uh, the default value, value two, which is equal to auto load, to the value four, which is equal to disabled, it should be possible to permanently disable the EDR user space service, the initialization of the EDR user space service, and furthermore, um, permanently disable the EDR user space component. But similar to services and to processes, even if we have achieved system integrity in user space and we should have full control over the keys and the sub keys, um, normally it's not possible 
uh, because of temporal protection to make changes to this data entry. And depending on the product, you probably create an alert in the web console of the EDR. That was also one of uh, the problems of, on my side. And the blue team was informed and I was isolated uh, from the machine. So what's the interim status until now? Uh, we learned about, a little bit about the relationship uh, of the user space component from EDR processes, services, rec keys. Normally processes are initialized as protected services. We can temporarily uh, kill it, but normally they get always restarted again and again by the connected EDR service. And at the moment, there is no uh, possible way to directly terminate the EDR service because of initialization as a protected service. But maybe it could be a first key element to use the registry key, which is generally responsible for the initialization of the service to disable the initialization of the service itself and furthermore um, from the user space component. Only problem at now, temporal protection from the EDR. We tried to make a, a change to the start entry, but at the moment, uh, it's not possible. So in the fourth step, we take our first step into kernel space and have a look at the kernel callback routines. So as we know, since the introduction of patch card, um, EDR vendors are not longer officially allowed to set their hooks in kernel space. So they are more or less forced to user space we use user space API hooking. So for example, they can register different kinds of callbacks to realize different kinds of tasks in user space. So for example, they can register the process notify routine to uh, realize user space DLL injection and furthermore, user space API hooking user space. And they also can re register other callbacks like the thread notify and load image notify routine. This talk, we will focus on the process notify routine. In general, EDRs use heavily callbacks also to collect uh, telemetry on the endpoint and build some kind of telemetry footprint on that machine. Besides that, EDRs can also use callbacks or register callbacks to protect their own registry keys against tempering attempts. So for example, they can register the ZMG register callback, but um, as we will see in a few seconds in uh, our first demonstration, they also can use the process notify routine to protect their own registry keys against tampering attempts. So in our first demonstration, our goal is to permanently disable the initialization of the EDR user space component and check what is the impact on our predefined goals in context to permanently get rid of antivirus and EDR capabilities. In the demo, I use a tool which is called Cheeky Blinder, and you can find it on GitHub. Before we come to the demonstration, an important notice um, you will see that the POC which we execute is called Putty. The reason for this is that um, I have cloned the attributes or metadata from the original Putty.exe to, uh, to our POC and call it Putty. The reason for this is also Sean mentioned it in his talk yesterday that uh, this only um, often makes the file more legitimate. And believe it or not, sometimes this can help to make the difference between if your POC gets, um, if you're able to bypass static and dynamic analysis from the antivirus module. Okay. So we come to our first demo and I will start it. So first we check the state from the user space service and we should see the service is normally running. Okay, then to, uh, to check if the antivirus module is active from the product, we simply execute Mimikatz and we get immediately prevented and the file gets deleted. And we try to take, make a change to the start entry, but currently temper protection is enabled. And depending on the product, we have now created an alert in the web console. So now we will use the POC Cheeky Blinder, which is here called Putty, to list the registered process notify callbacks. We have to load the drivers to get access to kernel space, then list the uh, process notify routines. And the red one is the process notify callback from our EDR product. And we want to patch it.
and now it should be possible to make changes to the starter entry. So we have, after patching the callback, we have to reopen the registry. And then it should be possible to make changes to the start entry. And we change it to the value four, which is equal to disabled. And after a reboot, the user space component should be permanently disabled. And then comes the interesting part because we want to check the impact on the antivirus and EDR capabilities. So I make no cut between the reboot. So it takes a little bit time. The machine is back online. A long seconds. Okay. So in a few seconds, our machine should be back online. And we log in back again. And now we want to check what is the impact on the antivirus and EDR capabilities if we have only disabled, permanently disabled initialization of the EDR user space component. So for this, we uh, open a command shell and then check the state from the user space service. And we should see that the initialization is disabled. Exactly, so service is stopped. And we try to execute Mimikatz again. Registry, first we open the registry, I think. Yeah, start and reset to four. So it's disabled, we execute Mimikatz, but despite the user space component is disabled, Mimikatz gets still deleted and prevented. And even if the user space component is disabled, the blue team can still use the host isolation function to isolate our compromised machine. So we will isolate the machine in a few seconds, we will uh, lose our RDP connection to that. So a few seconds more and the machine should be isolated. Okay, so what's the conclusion from the first demo? We saw if we are able to bring our vulnerable device driver, we can access, get access to kernel space if we have the, the privileges for it. Um, we can temporarily patch the callbacks, uh, which is responsible for uh, protecting the registry keys against tempering. Then we set the start entry to the value four, reboot the machine, and the user space component is permanently disabled. So this is some kind of important first step because it gives us some kind of concept which you can use. But also to be honest, only disabling the user space component uh, seems not to be really efficient. So despite the disabled user space component, we have the problem that the rest of the callbacks are still registered or get re-registered after the reboot. In context of the process notify routine, this means that user space DLL injection, furthermore user space API hooking is still enabled. And based on that, the prevention and detection capabilities from the antivirus and the YAM module are still enabled based on API hooking and callbacks. And we also saw in the demo that despite the disabled user space component, the, uh, the blue team can still use the uh, features from the EDR, like the host isolation feature to isolate uh, our compromised machine. And that is a problem for us. Okay. so. In the last step, we take our um, closer look at the mini filter driver. And the mini filter is a completely independent component. So our key or depending um, on the product, it is now our key element. Um, this means um, the mini filter itself is, uh, for example, responsible for kernel callback reg registration in general. And based on that, responsible for the antivirus and the EDR capabilities which are built on API hooking and registering callbacks. And also the mini filter itself is responsible 
for realizing features like post isolation feature, real time response shell, and sensor recovery update. So, how can we get rid of the mini filter? Um, the good thing is, it has its own separate registry key, so we can use the same concept. Uh, we are searching for the registry key for the mini filter. Uh, also, this key has a start entry. We can um, use the same concept to change the value to the start and for the start entry to the value of four, which is equal to disabled. And after the reboot, the um, mini filter should be permanently disabled. So, in our second demonstration, our goal is to only permanently disable the initialization of the mini filter. The user space component stays enabled. And then we want to check the impact on the antivirus and EDR capabilities. Also, in this demonstration, the POC is called Hadeo.exe. Uh, okay, so we start with the second demo. We have to check the service state uh, from the user space component that we see the user space component is now again running. And we also check the state from the mini filter driver. Mini filter is enabled and running. And our goal is now to only permanently disable the mini filter. Also to check the antivirus modules capabilities, we execute mimic cuts, get immediately prevented, so antivirus is turned on. And we are also not able to make changes to the starter entry because now tempo protection is still enabled. And again, we would have now created an alert in the web console. So again, we use our POC Cheeky Blinder, which we have called Putty um, in this demonstration. We load the driver to get, again, access to kernel space, write access, and then list the registered process notify routines on that machine. And again, the red one is the process notify routine from our EDR product. We remove the registered callback. And again, then reopen the registry and change the value for the start entry to the value of four, which is equal to disabled. And again, we have to do a reboot. Also in this case, I make no cut, so it takes a few seconds. After the reboot, we should see that the mini filter driver is now, or the initialization of the mini filter is now permanently disabled. So just a few seconds. Then we open the Windows Security Center, and at the end of the demonstration, we should see that now the product is no longer able to register in the Security Center. We also want to open a command shell and check the state from the user space and from the mini filter. So user space service is still running, but the mini filter driver should now be permanently disabled. And now we want to check again the impact. What is uh, the impact on the antivirus and the capabilities in case of only disabling the mini filter? So we try to list the process notify routines. We see that uh, the callbacks from the EDR is now no longer re registered in general. We try to execute mimic cuts. Uh, we have no problems at all. We can start it and also dump credentials from the ELSAS process. We would have no longer pro uh, problems with in context of prevention, detection, or collecting telemetry. And even if the blue team will now try to isolate our machine, isolating the machine will no longer work. So we try to contain our host. We can wait a few seconds, but at the end, nothing will happen. Um, and we will see that also the product is now no longer able to register in the Windows Security Center. Two seconds more. Okay, so okay, so what's the conclusion from our second demo? We saw compared to only disabling the user space component, disabling the mini filter driver has a much stronger impact 
for example, on the antivirus capabilities, which means that um, kernel callbacks are in general no longer registered. In context of the process notify routine, this means that user space DLL injection, furthermore, user space API hooking is permanently disabled. And in context of user space API hooking, um, this means that the EDR is no, now long, uh, not longer able to inject its own DLL into the uh, address space of this process and realize API hooking itself. And based on that, the main capabilities uh, from the antivirus based on user space API hooking and callbacks uh, is permanently disabled. And this was, was also the reason why we can now uh, easily execute mimic cuts without getting prevented, detected, or um, creating any telemetry on that machine. In context of EDR capabilities, this also has a much stronger impact. Um, also in context of the process notify routine, we see that now the EDR is no longer able to collect detections in general. Um, also, he's not able to collect no longer telemetry and build that uh, some kind of telemetry footprint. And we can also say that in general, this um, has a, a very strong impact on the threat handling capabilities uh, based on the EDR sensor, because um, now the EDR is no longer able to collect telemetry. And normally, the threat hunter relies strongly on um, telemetry based threat hunting. And disabling the MIDI filter driver itself has a strong impact on um, the features which can the blue team can uh, use by the blue team um, in the web console. So, for example, we saw that host isolation is no longer possible after the initialization of the MIDI filter is permanently disabled. Why is the impact so strong? So, um, in my opinion, um, the problem is, or what we saw as a result, is that after this having the mini filter, um, that play together from user space API hooking and callbacks um, is not longer existent. And based on that, uh, prevention and detection capabilities are mostly disabled. Okay, so at the end, a short summary. We learned about EDR user space uh, components like processes, services, and rec keys. We also saw some kind of uh, components which can be used in kernel space for EDR. So, for example, the ELAM driver and the mini filter. Um, normally, EDR processes are executed as PPL. We can temporarily patch PPL, uh, but normally it's much too less to permanently get rid of the capabilities from an EDR in context of antivirus and EDR. We only disable the uh, or terminate the EDR process. Um, the EDR service is normally executed as a protected service by using the ELAM driver and uh, is responsible for restarting a protected process. And um, at the moment, there's no way to directly post up or disable the service. Together, the process and the protected service build more or less the EDR user space component. Um, this by patch card, we, EDRs can register callback or different callbacks to realize different kind of tasks. So for example, they can register the process notify routine, kernel space to realize user space API hooking in user space. And normally, the registry keys are protected by the temporal protection from the EDR. So we have to identify, um, the, or we can use a vulnerable device driver to get access to kernel space after the, um, uh, the vulnerable device driver is loaded. Also, an unprivileged user would now have right access to kernel space. We can patch the responsible callback, which is responsible for the uh, temporal protection, then make uh, a change to the start entry to the value of four. Or is equal to disabled, and by this, the initialization um, of the user space component is permanently disabled. This was a good first step, gives us some kind of concept, but uh, we also saw that only disabling the user space component has not really, really a strong impact on our goals, which we want to reach in context of um, antivirus and EDR capabilities. Um, for that, EDRs use a uh, completely separate component, which is called the mini filter. So uh, in kernel space, and is responsible for callback registration in general. And product dependent, it could be that the mini filter is our key element to permanently get rid of antivirus and EDR capabilities. So we can use the same concept to change the start entry, um, temper the mini filter. And we saw that disabling the mini filter has a much stronger impact on um, the prevention and detection capabilities 
from an EDR at the end. Um, in my opinion, this, this is not really a vulnerability from an EDR. So it's, um, we have all more or less to play on the same rules on Windows, and we can also use that concept to, uh, which can the um, EDR windows to protect our systems. So now we only that we will use it to, uh, yeah, to unhook it or unregister it and permanently get rid of that capabilities. When you want to try this at home, uh, create your own lab, uh, set up a virtual machine with Windows 10 Pro or 11 Pro. Um, you can use different kind of tools. Uh, if you have access to a business EDR and you're allowed to do it, uh, try it with the EDR. You can also use a free antivirus solution. For sure, you then cannot try the impact on the EDR capabilities, but still you can a little bit research on the antivirus capabilities. I also wrote a small blog post about my presentation. Um, also, I can highly recommend to uh, visit the course from Raster Mouse uh, about driver development. So um, this course was also really helpful to understand the last things, which was unclear on my side. Um, yeah, at the end, thank you for listening to me. And if there are any questions, feel free to ask now or later on. And yeah, have fun with the rest talks of the conference.